Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back to League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. We took the, the Monday holiday off here, so crazy weekend. Lots, lots went down. You got world's qualifications. You got teams being eliminated, surprises across the board. And now, most importantly, we have our four LPL teams heading to the world championship. And you could honestly argue that they're four of the five best teams in the world. Lock it in. LPL is ready for the 2023 World Championship. Teams got their airplanes tickets booked. They've got their reservations at for dinner in Korea. And boy, oh boy, the final slot between Weibo Gaming and EDG. A di didn't disappoint on the hype that has been rolling through this LPL gauntlet. LNG got so close to breaking up the Golden Road for JDG, then proved, thankfully, they had no business being in the gauntlet, locked up that third seed. But yes, Weibo, after taking down Top Esports, going up against EDG, they were 100% the better team on the day, even though they had a nice throw in this series. Somehow, they went from a 6K gold lead to less than eight minutes later, they lost the game. I I've never seen a turnaround that quickly. Uh, you know what? We The only time that I've seen that before was probably the series prior in Top Esports versus Weibo Gaming. <laughs> noticing a theme wanna... here, huh? Uh, yes, and I'm noticing a single player being kind of a focal point. About that. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Yes, overall through the day, it was Weibo Gaming winning out the advantages in almost every single position. The biggest one for me that we looked at heading into this series is that bottom lane. You expected the type of form that was being shown the name that carries through the pressure of the moment uzi would rise up and take control of this series take control of edg's destination to be that final team for worlds it was not the case because let me tell you what it was the weibo gaming bottom lane duo coming through strong for the team and it really felt like pretty much every laning phase except for one in this series Uzi and Mako were constantly behind, whether it was the 2v2 straight up or Weiwei giving attention to the bot lane. By the way, least talked about guy on this Weibo roster, Weiwei, have yourself a show. He had his way with JJ all four games in this series. Yeah, and he certainly was somebody that I think has been under that microscope for Weibo Gaming, where he did come in, have that big effect for the team, especially for the shy in that top side. And then it kind of, you know watered itself down a little bit had some of these struggles and some of that journey getting it back in this crucial gauntlet run and to see it flourish to the extent that it did in this series where he really is getting to that degree where we can label him an x factor for this team that was a big benefit and yes we got to talk about the shy getting solo kills and solo killed and 1v3s and tp'ing and dying he is and always will be that double-edged sword but no question the reason we and everyone talks about him so much is he's one of the most exciting players not just in top lane but in any role to watch and for the first time in four years he's going back to worlds yes sir my boy he is finally gonna be back shining on the world's biggest and most important stage in League of Legends and you said it right when you're talking about this player I have never seen a stretch especially these last two in this gauntlet of a player able to pull off the 1v2 1v3 outplay and with consistency game after game you seem to pop off and make one of these things happen and then still be on that tippy tippy top where on the other side of it it's the incredible feed. It is just this int that never stops. And we certainly got a good dosage of both of those from the shy. Love them or hate them. You're gonna be screaming and hollering and in your seat watching the game on what he's doing. The shy certainly delivered in both of these series. Then you go to Zhaohu, Tristana, Azir, fantastic performances across the board. We get him returning to worlds in what is, I mean, just looking at the LPL alone, Scout, Knight, Zhaohu, an incredibly stacked, all-time great mid lane talent pool to be looking at. And Weibo may be the fourth seed, but as we saw all season, all year long in the LPL, this is a team that has top four at Worlds potential, or they could be the one LPL team to bottom out and not make groups. 
that's going to be the incredible thing heading towards this world because I think they're going to see so many people have so many different reads, so many different interpretations of how they value what this Weibo gaming roster could represent at Worlds, you're going to have people like myself and a lot of others where you're looking at that high end. You're talking about that ultimate potential, that optimal run for Weibo Gaming and what they could do. You're going to have a lot of people that will also remind you about these downfalls, about these slip ups, about these tragedies that are able to come through only seemingly only for Weibo Gaming. So this is going to be a hell of a time. Obviously so excited to see Weibo. A bit devastated that both Top Esports and EDG will not be going to Worlds. We don't know what the future now is going to be for Uzi, who came in as kind of this emergency replacement for EDG. Maybe he comes back next year with EDG or on a different squad. Yes, never felt like he reached Uzi of old. I think a lot of people weren't really expecting that to be the case, but a full offseason under his belt, I think this guy still absolutely has it to be playing at a pro level. Right. I think the, if you're looking at what he did this year, you're still feeling like there was not fully delivered on the Uzi that we are looking at with that name, the prestige and everything else. But you are still, you know, uh, tempted and wanting to see that next iteration of them. And seeing that iteration would be, as you mentioned, a whole offseason focused in, committed to a team, thing like that, and see if you can hit the ground running from the very beginning of a year set forth would be something I would be invested in from Uzi. Really think that uh, when you're looking at what went wrong with EDG, yes, certainly didn't step up in, in, in this type of performance, but there was not maybe enough time to fully integrate and be that type of, uh, of player for the team, even if there was at least a decent enough amount of time. And a last shout out for producer Reed and Top Esports because I think there's no question they are currently better than EDG easily fifth best team in the LPL and again you stack them in the LEC or LCS they're winning the entire split that's just how the LPL hits but when there's four teams even better we're denied seeing rookie and Jackie Love at Worlds again and I think unfortunately actually it would be even more so without a Weibo gaming and without the shy a player that can be obviously on those polar opposite ends but one that can actually reach that high enough of a level that it created that distance that gap that player difference between him and wayward in the top side that's a tough one for top esports but you look at how great these teams are how excited we are about the ones that we are sending to the world championship for the lpl looking at top esports looking at edg is that reminder of that cost that we have to put aside for these teams to be on that type of uh, stage if EDG and TES are hovering around that sixth spot in the LPL, LCK playoffs kick off, and you see who that sixth seed is in DRX. First round matchup against Humble Life went about exactly as you would expect a 12 and 6 team matching up against an inverse 6 and 12 squad. It was a 3 0 sweep for Hanwha. On what life taking care of business like it is on a time limit, my man. They're getting paid by the second. They got to make sure they're getting it done in this well, series. They milked it in the Europe. third game, then getting paid for that. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit in that one, but still overall getting that clean 3 0 performance for them and, and moving on in the next stage of these playoffs. I don't think anybody was really convinced that there was going to be this type of Cinderella run for a DRX team. Certainly showing us better signs, improvements over the last week in the LCK split, but not really to the level where you felt they were gonna get into a groove in a best of series, especially in a squad like Hanwha Life where things are rounding into form, the meta was there. Looking at something like uh, the way that things have changed since Grizzly has taken over in the jungle for this team, I didn't see anybody really putting down even a single victory for the DRX squad, but importantly enough, General Barrel has locked up his ticket for the LCK gauntlet. You better believe he's going to be there to make sure that he's got a shot to go to Worlds. That speaks to the ineptitude of the bottom five in the LCK, where you have a team doesn't make playoffs in spring, gets 3 0 in the first round of summer, gets a measly 10 championship points, and lock it up. That's enough to make it into regional finals. And let me tell you, if it was the bros, would have been a different story. Come on, man. You know, OK Savings Bank, bro, would have had our back. Might have been 3-1 in 
And then, you know, we're talking about a whole different ballgame. But for Hanma, obviously, you're not taking a ton from DRX. But I will say, Zeka, fresh off a player of the split for picking up MVPs throughout the year. Um, he's he's looked much better over the last few weeks. Add Nico to his two-trick arsenal now. And maybe it's like a, just a carousel that rotates through and it's what's on selection for the current patch or meta type of thing for him. Adding in the Nico is a good one. And yes, he did very much look uh, familiar on this champion and performing pretty darn well. Didn't see any of those Nico moments where he's getting a little bit too lost, having a little bit too much fun with the ability to change around and other no things. No pink words sliding around the river. Yeah, yeah. Uh uh. It was all business for this Nico, making sure that it is the damage, it is that lockdown, it is Hanwa life coming out on top. They'll go to the next round. Obviously, KT Rollster is going to be picking who they want as their next opponent. And shout out for the all LCK All Pro teams. KT, clean sweeping that first team. And your boy Lahan's also picking up regular season MVP. Hey, yes, sir. Finally, some respect for KT Rollster and what they have accomplished. This split locking in that All Pro. I think this is a great voting for the all pro given what we saw throughout the summer the way that really all five members of this team found that way to con contribute found that way to rise up and raise their game that they said no, no no you know just hanging out in that middle tier hanging out in that upper middle tier it's not doing it for us anymore in the lck we got to hit at that ultimate tier taking down gen g and looking comfortable doing so throughout this how we got LCK playoffs roll on. It's the matchup. T1D plus for day two. How we feeling, Mark? Uh, you know what? I'm about as good as I can, given what has happened the last couple of weeks for T1. It was at an all-time low. It has rocketed right back up, of course, strengthened with Faker's return and really the attitude that he has brought with him and the way that it has returned the form and the way that we are seeing the other four members form and interact within the T1 ecosystem. That's a big one for me. I will say there is a little bit of doubt and a little bit of worry because you're looking at the side of D plus Kia and recognizing that sure, still you might have whatever read or evaluation of them and their players. You will identify two things and you will say one, they did find a way almost every single time they played against T1 to raise up their game and be more of a challenge than what their record was stating at the time. And number two, I'm still always, always going to be looking out at your boy Canyon on the other side. Anytime you get into a best of series, you can start to unlock some tricky things from Hibbs champion pool and some things that are unexpected where he'll pop off and take over. It's crazy. Two series of Faker back and it feels like immediately T1 has ascended into the favorites over this matchup, despite still having that one in seven stretch in D plus, you know, having a better record, but it feels like T1 are the favorites. And it's going to be one of these things where still obviously even having maybe that slight seed of doubt of some of the underperformance that you did see with Faker out of the lineup, creeping back in. Maybe that's, you know, it's not enough or maybe a loss triggers it type of thing. So there still is some type of uncertainty for looking at looking at this T1 lineup and what you can expect from them in playoffs. Given what we did see from Faker in that return, given what we have seen from the other members in his in from Faker's return and the way that things have gone through, I think that you can move them into that favorites category once again. At the very least, still in this D plus matchup before we get to the later tiers of the or if I guess I should properly say before we get to the later tiers of the LCK playoffs. It's a treat for your midweek to get that matchup, though. We'll break it all down on the next episode. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. Thanks for watching, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.